Welcome to the MTR Network. We are back right before Thanksgiving. It's our last Super Tuesday before the crossover event. <laughs> and we are here to discuss Supergirl Season 2, Episode 7, The Darkest Place. Which, oh my god. I don't know what that title means. I did not even linger on that title. But whatever. Okay. So I'm Shanna. I'm here <laughs> with the doctor. Say hello. Hola. And um how do you feel about this episode? I loved it. It was it was okay, so we enjoyed last week, but this one was infinitely better. There was just so many squill worthy moments and even though I looked up and Kara had gotten snatched like twenty minutes in, I'm like, We're only twenty minutes in. There's more. <laughs> oh my god. That's... And then we got daddy back. <laughs> so that was my thing. Um I have like two sections at the bottom of my notes. Uh, one is uh, good stuff. And the other one is, you know what grinds my gears? Um, <laughs> but the first <laughs> one, um, my thing is the pacing is so excellent this season. And oh. halfway through this episode, I was like, they are literally throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. <laughs> and the good thing about it is that most of it stuck. So I can't even be mad at them. They, were, they just introduced like... 10 different things that I thought, you know, or, or like they followed up on like 10 different things that I'm like, I can't believe they stuffed all of this into the episode, but it doesn't mm -hmm. feel, um, it doesn't feel like overpacked or that storylines didn't get their due, even with all the stuff that we got this week. Right. So I'm, I'm really, really, really impressed with what they're doing. And Okay. Let's get into it. My first thing was Cyborg Superman. Girl, you know what's funny? Remember we were talking, I, I think I mentioned the promo from last week, and I was like, oh, my God, the her blood in him is making him evil. I did not see them bringing back Hank Henshaw. I did not see that coming. Okay, so you know me. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not as reader of the Supergirl comics but mm -hmm. I will run to Wikipedia in a hot second so <laughs> I that's what I did I was like what cyborg Superman like I don't know anything about this character his name is Hank Henshaw like they literally <laughs> seeded this they seeded this last season and if you were a non comic book reading person you didn't even know that this was a possible twist I'm well, so glad that they made they made it happen you know, it was funny, too, because remember, I think it was episode two or three, we see the first glimpse of Hank's red eyes at the DEO, mm -hmm. and we're like, oh my gosh, what is he? And I saw a lot of people like, oh my gosh, we're getting Cyborg Superman, and he turned out to be John Jones. It's like, oh. But they were happy about it, but I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> nice. That's nice bait and switch. That's nice bait so, and switch. like, to circle back around. And, yes. and still, like, instead of, like, trying to introduce a different cyborg Superman, no, they just super circled back around and gave David Hereward more to do, which I'm ecstatic about. Like, he's killing both of these characters right now. Like, he's doing amazing. I know, just the... um the difference between, you know, just this gentle, virtuous uh, John and this, like, evil xenophobe Hank is like, oh, my God, David Harewood is bringing it. He's doing mm -hmm. so good. And then the thing about it, too, um, in my uh, wikipedia is that there is... <laughs> is that a word? Yeah, I decided. Oh, okay, Donald Trump. It's like, Donald it's like Googling. It's, it's wikipedia um, <laughs> Oh, like Bigly? Bigly. Big yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I did a Bigly good job. Um, <laughs> but like the thing is in the new 52 there is a different cyborg Superman so they could have done that they could have introduced a totally different character to be cyborg Superman but mm -hmm. the fact that they circled back around and were like nah we already got David here <laughs> like, we already paying mm -hmm. him <laughs> so we might as well just give him more to do and like he can handle it because the thing was when he's David Harewood. He's David Harewood. <laughs> but when um Monel was like escaping and then all of a sudden I was like cuz I was all like oh they got Monel and I'm like all sad cuz you know they didn't shirtless torture him which was kind of sad too. Um <laughs> but I was like oh they got Monel but then when they had uh 
what looked like John. I was like, they got John too. I, I know. <laughs> it's like, what? When did they get John? And then we see him at the DEO. It's like, and I was like, four hours ago. I was, what I had no idea. I was like, oh my, like my actual notes are, I am a ball of emotion. Cause I was just like, oh no. And then I was like, oh no, it's a trick. And I was like, <laughs> so confused I was like I was legit like what is happening and I loved it I loved every second of it uh, yes yeah, so the pacing crazy frantic they they're throwing everything at us and luckily it's it's all working for the most part <laughs> um let's see so we'll get we'll have a circle back around to that with the ending um Monel. Okay. Oh, okay. So I don't know if it was you or someone else said Chris Wood couldn't act. I'm like, according to who? He's been doing, I feel like, a great job every week with keeping Monel to being this smart ass character because we love that about him, but also showing his growth because of his interactions with the characters around him. I think he's doing a great job. He's doing, an, first of all, anybody who says that Chris Wood can't act probably has only seen him in containment and that and I'm not saying because he does a bad job in containment I think he does a good job in containment but overall containment didn't have a lot of like deep acting moments in it there were like yeah. one or two here or there but if you watched him on Vampire Diaries and I know that's gonna sound weird if you watched <laughs> him in the Vampire Diaries because he played the villain on the season that he was on and he was scary as hell and at the really? same time did that vampire diary things where he was also sexy as hell i don't understand how everybody on that show actually more so the originals than vampire diaries but like almost everybody on that show is like scary villainous and also hot as hell like and he he had all three <laughs> like he was <laughs> frightening on vampire diaries so it's also for me I'm seeing him as a actor who has a lot of range because on this, I think he does a really good job of being both like funny and kind of charming, but also really sweet and naive in moments mm -hmm. like at the end. Cause I think that's the thing is like, we see him be very like funny and charming when he's just trying to like get his way or like, he's one of those guys who's like, I know I'm pretty. I can use that. Right. But then when he, like, genuinely feels emotion, he's, like, really, like, kind of sweet and naive. And I just, I'm loving how he's portraying this character. Oh, yeah. I think he's doing a great job. Yeah. Uh, and he can handle himself. When he fought off those guards to escape, he just, mm -hmm. such, I was like, I don't know he can he fight. Oh, wait, I'm about to close my computer because it's starting to get loud, but I forgot. I'm on my phone. So, what was the line? <laughs> Oh yes, he was like, I've just <laughs> discovered that if you like it, you should put a ring on it. Wait, wait, hear what he said. I've learned there's a long-standing mating ritual where if you like it, you should have put a ring on it. Clearly, you've succeeded in this arena, but from the looks of you, she can't be that pretty. <laughs> And he basically baited that guy into dropping his guard. I loved it. It was so oh, good. <laughs> he's so like he and then like and then at the end when he's like talking about Kara and he's just like so sweet about it. He's all like he's like, Is she made it to someone? <laughs> no, she latched. Oh yeah, oh, she made it. She's like, Well, in our culture, yeah. you get your proposal, you know, your bonded to you know your promise to someone and then you get latched <laughs> well first it's hitched and no she's not they which you by the way i love how like uh when said it's hitched as if hitched is better than latched I know. i'm like both of those sound very outdated gentlemen thank you. Thank you. <laughs> one is not better than the other he's like it's hitched like get it together mano <laughs> um also though you know you know how I feel about that, though. I'm, I know, but honestly, I'm not here I'm for the here mating. For it. I'm here I'm not for here it. for the shoot mating. Your shot, Mon L. I'm here for it. I mean, he could shoot his shot all he want. He gonna throw up nothing but bricks. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
want him to land the alley oop. I want him to win. Yes. No, because no. offense. And like I said, I was deeply disappointed. And maybe it was the network. You can try to blame the network, but the Kim, like they had all that relationship chemistry, and then them kisses. I felt like I was watching like a hundred year old people kiss, and I've seen a hundred year old people kiss that's got more passion than they did. No. So for me. I'm like, okay, maybe maybe we've got a little something here. You know, you all doing your vigilante thing, keeping secrets, acting crazy. She needs somebody that's got a little bit of sense. And as goofy as Monel is, he got a little sense. Nine yet known. I'm not <laughs> here for it. Not here for it. And Jimmy was giving him the same look I was getting, giving him like, you better stand down. You better chill out. Why are you asking? Who wants to know? <laughs> like that's exact. I was like Jimmy. I was looking at him like, why all the questions? <laughs> why you want to know? <laughs> like how dare he? <laughs> Plus now also they they threw in that little line where he was about to tell a secret. So you know whatever the secret is is going to come between them. And then of course he falls out conveniently when Jeremiah shows up. I was like, mm-hmm. really, really. You managed to hold on all that time, and then all of a sudden, you, here comes the rescue team, and you fall out, and we got to do emergency surgery. Really? <laughs> so annoyed. <laughs> so annoyed. Uh, um, also, so one of my Grind My Gears things was uh, when, what it was like, what was the, oh, Kara goes, what's, what do you call a a guy who... A, a male. Oh, movie. you mean the low key, the low key racist? Yeah, and they keep the going out there. Oh, yeah, that was that. And then Alex says too. a Daxamite, and I was like, if you don't stop calling Monel out his name, because that's how I felt. I felt she said Daxamite like she was trying to say the N word. Thank you, Alex. Conduct yourself accordingly. I don't know. But then Kara that. came back with like, yeah, am I right up top? I know. Of yeah. Response. Like, you know what? You can you can have a gaggle of seats too, little girl. Mm-hmm. I am not here for that. They need to leave that man alone. Of course, now though, again, they're setting it up for him to have some sort of secret, and we're like, we're gonna find out that like Daxum really blew up Krypton or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's gonna be the story about how he got off planet wasn't quite what he told everybody. Oh yeah, definitely. But for me, they can't be mad at him find because, out he no. like kicked the prince in the shins. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for me, the way they were treating him, I don't blame him for like stretching the truth on that story. Like mm-hmm. y'all gonna stop talking about my people like we ain't shit. Mm-hmm. Y'all can't be mad. Y'all been treating them like no. No. Yeah, no, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. And and again, like I would lie to the way y'all act. <laughs> I would definitely lie. Um, what uh, do I have? Anything? Any other notes on Monel? Um, no. But that brings us to Daddy Danvers. Daddy. <laughs> I I, I mean. Love D- I, I think I've said this before. I am clearly a Dean Kane stan. And part of it is, I mean, I came to him through Superman. Like, yeah. that was my first introduction to Dean Kane, And I've just loved him ever since. I, I feel like all of us came to him through Superman. Yeah, right? I, I mean, I think that was his first major thing. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm researching. You keep talking. <laughs> so it's like... I, I I just love him. I think he's funny. I think he's so cute. Like even now that he's like grown as hell. Like what Dean Kane must be like. He he's, is he's fifty. Like, he's fifty years old. Oh gosh, he's older than me. Yeah, Dean Kane is fifty years rage. old, and so I'm just saying, Sorry. like <laughs> he 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 still has that boyish face, that boyishly handsome face. I, I just, I, I love him. Oh, you know what? No. I don't know about you. Now I remember where I first saw him. It was not Superman. He, he was, was that racist asshole, asshole in that episode of A Different World yes. with, when they all got arrested. And wasn't he also, I don't know if he was, I feel like he was also on 90210. He was. Was he like a date rapist? <laughs> he played a character called Rick. <laughs> or he was like a frat boy. Hold on. Brandon now dating Brooke falls for blah, 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 blah. Steve pushes David. Brenda like, pretends. Oh no, it's someone Brenda met 
Brenda pretends to be French to woo another American student she meets there. Oh, Ray, in, Paris. A crush on her. Yes, in Paris. Yes, she meets him in Paris. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was the cute guy that Brenda met in Paris when she was pretending to be French. Yep. Good times. Good times, Anna 2 and 0. But I, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like before, he did kind of always play like the frat boy, the football guy, you know, and then he was on Lois and Clark and he was, he was Clark Kent. You know, he's just like, yeah. how do you not love him? He's the man who's like saving the world and falling in love every week. I was just mm-hmm. like, how do you, oh, he was on an episode of Living Single too. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I think he may have romanced Regine on that one. I feel like he did. And he liked the sisters. Look. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, I'm, I'm glad we finally have him back. I feel like it's, we're not going to get him back permanently, unfortunately. I feel like he's well, always okay. going to pop up. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's my question. Right? I f- he said he's been there for 15 years. He can wait a little longer. I feel like he didn't go with them either because... Okay, so... And I will put this in my write-up. I'm wondering... My mind is all over the place because he showed up. I'm like, okay... Maybe them messing with his girls was a step too far. Is he the one who helped enhance Hank? Is he enhanced himself and that's what's keeping him here? Mm-hmm. Or did he have some kind of deal with Lena and Cadmus? Like, if I stay, you back up off my girl, Kara and Alex. But then when Kara started getting close as Supergirl to Lena, Lillian decided that's it. The gloves are off. She's too close to my family. I've already had one of your Kryptonian fail- friends mess up one of my family members. <clears throat> You're not going to get another. There has just so many questions as to yeah. why he stayed. I'm still unsure about whether or not Lillian knows that Kara is Supergirl. Like, I can't tell if she's upset that Supergirl is close to her daughter or whether she knows about the danvers Kara relationship. I'm, I'm thinking she knows because Hank knows. And ain't no way Hank would have kept that quiet. Hank would have told her. I feel like oh, Hank... Oh, Hank does know. I was like, I yes, can't Hank remember knows. if he found that out before. Yes, but he does. Yeah, because his first thing was like, I should have locked you in a cage. My God. <laughs> like, like mm-hmm. my Lord, dude. <laughs> um, I also looked up Lillian Luther. We now officially have a name. So <laughs> they are going with straight from the comics. But she's not really a character in any of the comics. From what I well, can tell. and wasn't she dead? Like, well, okay, I'm going off of Smallville at this point. Yeah, Lily so that's the thing. died and she, like died shortly after the birth. Like, I don't know, she died the... in a mental institution or after the birth of the. After the... no, she... no, see what happened. I'm going off of Smallville, so don't get yeah. mad, listeners. But no, in like that. What happened? Smallville when she had the is the baby. most comprehensive, like. Is the most we've seen Lillian Luther ever in any of these properties. So Smallville right. is the, the only place to go off of. <laughs> okay, so in Smallville, um, Lillian gives birth to their second child, Julian, but she didn't want a second child because she saw how Lionel was treating Lex and didn't want their second baby to suffer the same fate. So in her postpartum depression, she actually smothers the baby to death and then Lex comes across it. And then sends her to her room and he takes the fall. But because he's 12, they don't do anything. And Lionel covers it up. But it shapes their relationship. And then later, I want to say Lillian eventually kills herself. I I, again, I just wikied it. But I, I, don't <laughs> think, I don't think she kills herself. But she does die. Like, her health deteriorates yeah. soon after. But, um... But yes, that's Smallville is really the only thing that we have to go by when it comes to Lillian Luther. When I looked it up in the comics, she's only had like one appearance in the comics and it was I think it was like a flashback. It was very quick. Um so Smallville is the only time they've fleshed out that character. Um so this is a completely different take on a character that's really only ever been seen on another television show. Hmm. So, um, I am. And she's she's certifiable. She's crazy. I I love My how they always do this. Who's the real Superman? I'm like, what kind of revisionist Trump bullshit history are you talking about, lady? This whole like Cadmus thing too. Like 
Cadmus was the first hero of of the Greeks and he you know he's most famous for killing monsters and I'm just like really ma'am really is this is this okay all right all right <laughs> like but um interesting thing is that Cadmus is also um he's he sacrifices to Athena who is the goddess of wisdom Mm. So, I mean, I'm basically she took the parts that she cared about. Because <laughs> in the DC universe, often like Superman and them, they're often seen as gods, like yeah, not monsters. Um, so, um, yeah, Lily and Luther. I don't know how I feel about. I mean, I clearly dislike her. <laughs> But I'm really trying to figure out, like, what she knows and what she doesn't know. And because also you would think that the best way to show people that aliens aren't good would be to kind of expose Supergirl. But she's not doing that. If she knows. Because even if they expose her, Supergirl in her personal life and in her hero life has done nothing threatening. Yeah. You're basically, it's like saying, okay, cotton candy is made of sugar, and? (laughs) So, what's the point? Now, if you tell me that cotton candy is made of sugar laced with PCP, that's something different, but that's not who Kara is. Speaking of (laughs) Kara, when they said that, when she, they had her say that line, I wasn't always this mature, (laughs) I was like... Like, I just gave, like, the illest, like, looked into the camera like I was on The Office. Like, (laughs) are y'all hearing this? Are y'all hearing this? She even delivered it like, I know this is a bullshit. I was like, is this the writers being self-aware? Are they trying to be meta? And then what's hilarious (laughs) is that she says that line. And then, what is it, like, three scenes later... She makes the worst decision ever. Like, I'm going to make myself super weak because clearly this woman who has done nothing but lie will keep her but word. Do you really think it was the worst decision, though? It it was in line with her character, and I could I see why. I was completely in line with her character. Her now, what was silly was her laying dumb. on that table like you... What was silly was her laying on that table like you promised. I could see her doing it if she was trying to buy him a little more time. Mm-hmm. But in terms of laying on it, like, you promised. I'm like, okay, see, y'all could have held that line because I would have been on that table. Like, I know she was full of shit, but maybe if she's busy with me, she can't be over there killing it. (laughs) Let me give let me give them all of my power to absorb and then be super weak and not be able to. My thing was once she was out of the cage that. okay, that was really what frustrated me is I can understand you agreeing to it. And then once you're out of the cage, you do the double cross, you knock everybody out. But, like, she was just like, let me put on this mask and make myself weak and then be surprised when they double-cross me. Really, Kara? Really? <laughs> but we know that Kara is just too pure. To be honest, Kara is too, still too naive and trusting. And while we've seen some growth specifically in terms of how she emotes and interacts with people, which has been great, she's still very young. And she's still like, okay, I have to believe that there's some level of goodness and honorable honorability or honor in people. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And no, I'm like, Kara. I'm with you. Kara, I'm with Kara, you. you know, Kara. I, I constantly. Le- least favorite character on the show named after her. <laughs> <laughs> Just is. It's like how I don't like any of the girls on, on the show girls. <laughs> None oh, of the I women. I tried that show. That show was no. a hot mess. Yeah, Sorry, I, anyway. I, I stopped we watching. Digress. No, I stopped watching it. But I'm saying it's like the show is called Girls. I don't like any of the girls. I just like irony. Um, so since we're talking about the whole Cadmus thing, can we back up to that battle between Hank and Kara? Because there is one point, and Melissa, I my hat's off to her. I want to hug her and say, good job. Where when she punches him and he turns around, you see on her face, she knew exactly where she got it fucked up. <laughs> how many how many stops back she did. You know, it's just like, good job, Melissa. Because we all know this ain't going in well. No, not at all. She knew she was going through a wall. 
<laughs> she knew I was that was coming in. I feel like that's like every superhero's thing though. Is like <laughs> it's like when they punch the wrong person, they're like, "Shit, I'm about to be punched through a wall." <laughs> Like, oh, Lord, it's like that me. and like the superhero like fall from the top of a building thing it was like the, those mm-hmm. two things like gotta happen <laughs> gotta happen but also can we tell I mean I, I know that we can write it in because on rewatch I had to catch myself because on the first watch when she used her heat vision on his face I'm like oh Kara really how quick we are to murder the black man <laughs> <laughs> But then I'm like, Shonda, she has x-ray vision. I'm sure she read the scene and decided she could try this to try to take him out. Yeah. But that first, I'm glad I watched it a second time because between that and that that's my com- comment, my arms was crossed and I was giving an evil stink eye. Well, here's my issue that I've noticed, and this is not just a Supergirl thing. This is a CW thing. Lately, hmm. there seems to be a lot of one-off Asian bad guys or red shirts. Why are they oh, out yeah. here killing Asian folks willy-nilly? <laughs> that's a good ass question oh my like, god you had the, um, like the, the flash the guy, was, the guy that was the bait to this, on this mm-hmm. episode the guy that was the bait on this episode the guy the flash guy who got killed by the shade this last week um there was another oh the, the dude who was um who had the kryptonite in his chest and on legends they had that whole um they went back to ancient japan the whole samurai mm-hmm. thing and i was just like oh. Oh, my lord that episode <laughs> was saved by sarah and her stuff being really interesting because otherwise it would have fallen totally into like the whole little like submissive asian woman white guy savior tropes that episode oh was a, a wee bit problematic <laughs> a wee bit a wee bit See, a whole bit. When you say we <laughs> with that inflection, it means more than we. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's just like, I'm like, I don't know the CW. <laughs> like, I'm kind of like, what does the CW have against Asian people? <laughs> well, that's like, they keep taking Jack's all these funky ass problematic time periods. I'm like, Can y'all stop taking this black man to these places? Please? I'm okay with that because every time they do, they address it. Whereas like last season, they barely talked about it. <laughs> I was like, y'all can't be bringing him here and not at least having a discussion. <laughs> like, come on, y'all. <laughs> like this season, they at least talk about it and integrate it into the story. So I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> and then also, Cadmus is so... Uh, hypocritical because they hate aliens but they love them some alien tech they all about using that alien tech Girl, that's, called, that's called america that's called <laughs> exactly. america oh no like clearly lily and luther like would be in trump's cabinet she would be like the mm-hmm. minister of uh science or whatever <laughs> it's totally trump's cabinet anyway <laughs> um so let's talk because i want to save uh Maggie and Alex for last so let's talk about Guardian and I would like to point out that we've already done like three different topics and we still got a couple more to go oh and we we still gotta do John John and Megan Megan. I'm sorry that that one (laughs) is the one I really really want to save for last Um, okay but um yeah so Jimmy Jimmy this ain't Star City you just can't be running around being a vigilante with a voice box. With a voice box and a friggin' uh, sidekick in a... <laughs> what is he in an ice cream truck? <laughs> it looks like an ice cream truck that's been painted red and black. I was like, <laughs> my God. I'm a, it's the most conspicuous vehicle ever. <laughs> they go. Ever. We are in season five of Arrow where we know that vigilantes just make more vigilantes. And here we got Jimmy running around. Although his, I think his costume did look slightly better this week. Was I wrong? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I still have a problem with the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I get it because he's trying to cover his face. I like the whole intro conversation where everybody was like, who is the Guardian? Like, he, get, and this is the thing. I'm surprised that Alex didn't figure it out on her own. Like, I... Car wouldn't, bar. yeah. Car wouldn't, but Alex would. At the bar, <laughs> yeah. Especially Win, because the thing about Win is that he likes to brag about his work. 
<laughs> so he's sitting there like, oh, are you sure? Like, did, did you notice the suit? And did, like, he's like, basically like humble bragging about everything he's done. And I'm like, y'all can't figure it out that it's these two idiots. <laughs> like, come on now. At least Alex. Like, Kara's not that smart. But at least Alex. <laughs> Ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um... And then, of course, obviously, another vigilante shows up who will take it one step further. Because that's what always happens. Oliver yes. knows this. Like, I hope at some point in the cr- crossover, Oliver's like, and tell Jimmy to stop running these streets. Like, because that's all <laughs> I got. <laughs> like, somebody needs to tell him to stop running around in these streets. <laughs> Can I just say, um, this is going to be unpopular. I had a conflicted relationship with this part of the episode. It was both my favorite and least favorite part. Mm -hmm. It was my favorite because I love seeing Wynn and Jimmy back together. They're so cute. They've got it. The bromance is just everything between them. I love it. Mm -hmm. Love the bromance. Love that interaction. I'm loving that we're giving Wynn something to do instead of just sitting at the DEO in front of computer screens. That said, I think because of how Jimmy came to the conclusion that he needed to do this, Every time I see the Guardian, it just, it, it bugs me. It, it doesn't work for me. Yeah. I just think it's, I, I think he came to it. It made sense to me how he came to it, given his history and given what we saw last season about him feeling like he's not involved. I continue to be bothered by the fact that he's keeping it a secret. And yeah. now that Alex knows the secret, but Kara still doesn't know, that frustrates me. Because, like, to me, at this point, if Alex knows the secret, everybody just needs to know. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Especially, like, once, so I kind of understand you not doing it initially. I said last week that once he... Sh- like showed Kara that he's an ally and that he can do this, he should have revealed himself. Then this week you have this person coming in pretending to be him and kind of tarnishing the work he has been doing. And he clears his name and then he still doesn't tell her. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, this this is not going to work out good for anybody. The fact that you're still continuing to keep this a secret. And again, now that Alex knows, and Alex made it clear that she knows. <laughs> like, oh yeah. You just need to tell Kara what's going on. It, it just needs to happen. Um, I mean, other than that, I mean, I'm glad that Maggie like trusted Alex enough to let the guardian go that was a nice moment (laughs) i think it said more about (laughs) maggie's relationship with alex than it did about the guardian (laughs) oh absolutely and i think she was you know she's trying to this yeah i'll just leave it at that because i don't want to jump to the other piece that you said oh no no we can don't no let's jump to it now okay so every i saw people online in our group when we were talking about the episode saying, Oh, why is Alex being petty? But I was like, you know what? I didn't normally when Alex is being petty, I take issue. And this time I didn't. She, that's not pettiness. Let let me put you like this. I'm not gay, but I can't. So I can't imagine what it must be like to, to start to come to terms with that within yourself and then begin revealing that to yourself in a climate like the one we live in here on planet earth, let's just be honest on planet earth where that can be met with a wide range of reactions. Some that can even be a risk to your life. And while Alex came out in a safe environment, that's still something life changing in terms of how she approaches the world. So to have that followed up with such an abject rejection, which made sense, Maggie was right in what she did because not only is this new to Alex, Maggie's on the rebound. So the potential for hurt was there, but I had no problem with how, Alex was dealing with it because she had a right to be hurt. She had a right to be dejected and she had a right, a right to express that the way she did. Mm -hmm. No, it's not all good. No, we can't just jump back to being the way we were because I just, this was a big moment for me and not to make it your problem, but you completely shut me down Yeah. after encouraging me to take this leap. And I took this leap because I thought I'd be safe following up on what made me realize this about me. 
So I had no problem with how that came out exactly. or how she was reacting. It was natural and normal and good to see because a lot of shows would just gloss right over it. Mm-hmm. And that's not the right approach either. The thing, uh, when it comes to anything where somebody is being rejected, they are, as long as they're not like being like physically violent or like deliberately sabotaging the other person, they have a right to hurt feelings. And Mm -hmm. those hurt feelings don't necessarily go away in the timeline that the person who hurt them wants them to go away in. Like, Mm -hmm. that's the thing. It's been, like, what, a week since that? I mean, if we're going by our time, it's been a week. But Mm -hmm. it seemed about a week of, like, you know, the Guardian being out in these streets and, like, you know, like, and Alex not really talking to Maggie. Like, sometimes people need more time and specifically because of all those things you just said compounding the situation Mm -hmm. I think she she just needed more time and like I don't think it's wrong for her to ask for that or to even be like I'm not okay right now and I'm and it's I don't want to because the thing that I also hate that people do is like they'll reject somebody or hurt somebody's feelings on tv and then it's like that person is out here pretending that they're not hurt or rejected. And then what ends up happening is that then it's all like resentful and it comes out and it blows up and it becomes a bigger thing. Like I thought Alex tried in that moment when Maggie like confronted her at the bar, which was also a moment where she confronted her in front of people, which makes it harder for you to express yourself when you know that people are watching. And so Alex was just kind of like, I'm okay. Like whatever. And that was her way of just kind of be like, I don't really want to deal with this right now. But then when they were alone, she was like, nah, like, it's not okay. Like, I'm, I'm not completely over this and I need time. And I thought that was a completely valid reaction. Um, and also, I love it because Kyler is out here giving these beautiful impassioned speeches. Yeah. And just like really getting the chance to act. I'm loving every single interaction (laughs) that she's having with Maggie (laughs) because she's just she's acting her ass off and I even like the end I thought the end made a lot of sense of Maggie you know saying trying to make amends making amends and she cares about Alex it's very clear that she cares about Alex I totally see in the back half of the season them possibly having a relationship um but I, I again it's it's valid for people to like say no and to take time. And you actually don't usually see that on television, which is great. Yeah. Like people yeah. act like this is, <clears throat> these are all really realistic reactions, which mm-hmm. I think one thing you kind of have to have in these shows where like everything else is so fantastical is when you have these real moments to make them as real as possible and not as comic booky as possible. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I liked it. I, I thought it was great. And then yeah, I love that she trusted her. Mm-hmm. Um, like she trusted her to be there and, you know, to, and, and, and to believe her when she said like the, the guardian is not the person you, you need to be after. Um, and I, and that's another thing that I love about them. They work together so well. They really do. They, they, they trust and respect each other as professionals. Mm-hmm. I, there's just so many layers to this relationship <laughs> like so, so much more so than like a lot of other TV relationships um, and it's not just about the even with the stuff with the lesbian storyline it's not just about that yeah um, I can't believe Alex the, with the, when they went back to, to where Cadmus was I was like, mm-hmm. you really thought they were still going to be there, girl? Right. Girl, come come on now. <laughs> it's like, Alex. I mean, you like. You were born yesterday. Yeah. Girl, like, on. good job. You tried. But, you but... know what? She's, she's bl- she was blinded by the idea that her yeah. father was verified alive and well. Mm-hmm. Um, so now the the big meaty stuff was oh. all the John and Megan. Oh, my God. I I was like blacking. They are blacking. <laughs> this is like, I mean, because he already was doing it, David Harewood, with the the su- cyborg Superman stuff. So he was already acting his ass off, being a completely different character. 
Then you get this. Mm -hmm. And John broke my heart. Oh my God. Broke my heart. Oh. And so is Sharon. Sharon Leo is acting her ass off as well. Oh yes. Oh, so good. Like, so the first moment they have, you know, she brings him the, the chicken noodle soup. That's what I'm just calling it. I don't remember what she called it. It's oh, I have soup. it. I have it. It's k- <laughs> k- k- <crack> nar. <laughs> what is it? I got it. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, where is it? Where's my... Okay, I wrote these notes. Notes, 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 notes. She said, do 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 stupid girl, blah, blah, blah. It's Hank, blah, blah, blah. Can't wait to... Where the heck is it? I typed it. It may, you're right, it's chicken noodle soup. But I had the name. Okay. K- 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 Krazar. <laughs> it's chicken noodle soup. She brought him chicken noodle it's soup. Apostrophe K R Z A R S. She brought him chicken noodle soup with some peppers. <laughs> That's she said, what you said with some what? With some peppers. Oh, That's Lord. what she was like. I use some peppers. <laughs> so I was like, oh, it's spicy. It's nice. <laughs> And then, like, immediately, he starts having hallucinations. Well, no, he was had this. He the, it wasn't the soup. He hadn't even he drank. The I know, yet. but that was so funny. It was like she showed up, and then immediately he starts having hallucinations. And his hand is still trembling. Oh yeah. Um, the CGI He's got Martian work. Parkinson's man. I hate you, Martian Parkinson. <laughs> what he does. The CGI stuff is so good. Like his family standing there yes. in the corner. That was one of the screenshots I grabbed for the write up. It was so, so well done. So well done. Like, again, budget upped or having everybody in the same place. I don't, the resources are better. It's just great. Um, <laughs> I love the CGI. When he said his, I don't know if they were his daughter's name, Kim and Tanya, I was like, so yeah. all the Martians are black? All the Martians <laughs> that just like they're clearly all black. Kim and Tanya. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Kim Jones and Tanya Jones, you telling me they're not black? <laughs> Come on. I didn't say that. <laughs> So, and his hand started shaking, and she didn't see his hand shaking, mm-hmm. but I, I feel like she picked up on the fact that he was hallucinating, and you yeah. can tell she's worried, because she knows what's happening to him. The part that got me was when he pulled out, when he pulled out that gun. Girl, oh. And then they, like, flashback, and that poor, <laughs> that poor well, DEO been- agent is just standing there, like, what I do? Oh, wait, in my notes, because that was the other thing, they picked the most nondescript person for that role. I'm sorry to that dude. But Ron said he nearly blows the head off a dude who looks like the default face for a Skyrim non playable character. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was like, he was so terrified. And it was like, everybody, and everybody's looking, but like, everybody's just like, but I mean, everybody eh. was just, they, like, everybody also seemed unconcerned. Wait, no, the one guy standing in the background had his hands on his hips like, what you do now to get, deserve this? Exactly. He was just chilling in the background like, mm, he must have deserved to get his gun pulled on him. I'm like, hello. Like, I love it because, like, Alex is like, no, Hank, no. And everybody else is kind of just like, typical day Man. at the DEO. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, must be Monday. Like, he... <laughs> He must be back to being old Hank Henshaw. Yeah. We got us every other Wednesday. <laughs> I feel like that was probably old Hank Henshaw just pulling out his gun for no reason. <laughs> uh, but, okay. Oh, no. So then he realizes that she's a white Martian. They do some blood tests. He realizes immediately that she is a white Martian. Because of what the blood, the so, what yeah. they see the, um, the cells doing to his he could recognize the cell mm-hmm. the cell interaction, even though Alex didn't. And so he rolled up on her in the alley, like, show yourself. I know who the hell you are. And she's like, oh, but I was the one. And I'm like, and then we got exposition suit, which we didn't need. Cause I'm like, oh, sweetie, we figured that we out. Yeah. Like, we, we knew that. <laughs> well, we knew that. <laughs> and, and he don't give a shit. So can we just move on to what we're going to do now? <laughs> but the, the, when he said, show yourself. I was like, David Harewood has been classically trained. <laughs> I was like, that was some Shakespearean line reading right there. <laughs> like, Show yourself. <laughs> like, oh, they shit. have just 
Oh my god, they have just been giving him so much good stuff this episode. So I mean, this season. This season. Because yeah. it, just in this episode, you have this hurt, wounded person who is still good, but you can't be mad at him for his reaction to this woman who is like the epitome of his heartbreak. She is the source, like the symbol of that heartbreak. When he and said you have they should have burned you too. Yes. It was real, though. Mm. I can see. Mm. Kills oh, me. Oh, my God. And, but then on the flip side, you have him being this evil, sinister, sinister xenophobic human. I'm just like, oh, my God. David Harewood is just bringing this so well this season. And even, like, if you just go back to the first scene where he's so sweet. Like, when she brings in the soup mm-hmm. and he's just yes. all like, he's like, my mother used to make this for me when I was unwell. Like, thank you so much. Like, this is like a taste of home. Like, you're just like, oh, my <laughs> This is not going to end well. He Damn is it. so sweet and so innocent. And then, and like, literally, so by the time they start fighting, I was like, just scream. I was like, but she made you soup. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? I was, like, I was like, no, you can't be mad. She made you soup. <laughs> <laughs> and then when she did reveal herself and oh. he did, I'm like, ah, oh, dude. I don't know if he wanted any parts of it. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, he gave her like a roundhouse cartwheel kick. <laughs> but face. it was after. But wait, you noticed that roundhouse cartwheel kick was after he was talking trash while she was kicking his ass. I'm like, how are you talking shit? And she's kicking your ass. That don't make sense. No, he was like, I got some for this. <laughs> Here's his feet. <laughs> he's like, I will destroy you as he's getting kicked in the face. I'm like, huh? The best. Dude, I don't think you're reading the room right. <laughs> And then when she changes back and she's like, you know, if I don't want to go like that, like, that's not who I want to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Die. <sighs> and then when she reveals to him that he's turning into a white Martian. And we see his <gasps> hand change. And you can tell based, like, just like the shakes, he's not able to control it. Oh, my God. That's I... not something he himself did. His the sh- Just like it's yeah. out of his control. So... Oh my god. No, we have to figure this out because I really don't want him to be a white Martian. Because <laughs> the thing know. is, what happens if he changes and can't convert back into like a human form? Yeah, or like he, you know, yeah. I'm trying to figure out because it does seem like from what we've seen of the white Martians uh, last season and this season, it does seem like it's very, um, like they're, they are very kind of like beastly. And so I'm wondering what keeps her in human form so much. Mm-hmm. Like, is it just like a willpower thing? Like, I, I like that they showed him doing, um, I think it was Tai Chi. And yes. kind of centering himself. I'm wondering mm-hmm. if that will help the effects of whatever's happening to him. Obviously, they'll probably have to, like, come up with some sort of cure or whatever. But um, I'm wondering if that will help him, if he can learn to control what's happening to him. Um, yeah, I th- th- I'm just so excited. Like, David Harewood is just going to have so much to work with this season. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the other thing that bugged me. So we know, for, it seems across Superman properties, Lex always gains access to the Fortress of Solitude. Mm-hmm. So why the hell hasn't Clark put two-factor authentication on the Fortress of Solitude? <laughs> well, Come you on, you man. know why? Because they had to introduce Project MacGuffin. it's project mcguffin every season (laughs) we have a new project that we have to stop well and here's the thing that i don't get it's something that jeremiah said when he sent monel and carol on their way because she was like if i leave you here she won't forgive me he said if you die here there will be no one left to forgive Mm. And I'm like, but that doesn't make that doesn't vibe with what Cadmus's goals are. It's not the eradication of the whole planet, like with Non and um, uh, Astra. It's just to get rid of aliens. But I'm wondering if he knows something about this project. Yeah. That will result in the destruction of everybody. Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure. Well, I thought in the moment, I I didn't think of it in a broader sense. I thought in the moment he just meant like her. Like if you don't go. And you die here, there there won't be anyone to forgive. I thought of it more I, in a personal way. But yeah, th- I think... Because what always happens in these things is that 
the villain thinks that they have the plan and it's, you know, the plan that's going to be the thing. Mm-hmm. And always it's something bigger or it's out of, it, you can't control it once it starts. And, you know, like there, it's always something more. So Project MacGuffin is probably <laughs> going to be like something to like eradicate what all aliens. Shame, man? It's got because this is what happens every season. It's like the same thing. This is what the Vampire Diaries does that frustrates the hell out of me. Every season, there's like an object that they have to find, and this object is gonna like open the door to hell or like make all vampires able to walk in the light or you know make all like werewolves super hu- like it's always an object that they have to get every freaking season. And with uh freaking Supergirl, it's always a project. Because, like, like, what was the one last season that they were going to destroy the world with? Myriad. But myriad. it wasn't called a project. It was just called Myriad. It's just the same thing. It's, gonna it's be not. Like myriad. Not. Medusa. Not. MacGuffin. <laughs> they both, they, they, the reason they all have M names is because they're Project MacGuffins. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know that's what's going to happen. It's going to be, like the key to destroying all alien life, except it's going to like go out of control and blah, 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 and destroy earth. <laughs> blah, 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 destroy earth. Cause that's what all super villains want. Um, but yeah, so I, I can see that happening. I totally see him, you know, I think Jeremiah is definitely going to be like the, the key to all of this. And mm-hmm. he'll probably end up having to sacrifice himself in that end. You hush your filthy mouth. That will not happen. No. I love Dean Kane. We're not, I want all we're the not Dean Kane. We're not speaking that into existence, ma'am. I want all the Dean Kane, but let's be real. <laughs> <sighs> Just saying. Just saying. Um, anyway. <laughs> what would you, I'm sad on you. What would you rate this episode? <laughs> Oh, I'll give it an A plus. This was great. Because even though the Guardian storyline bugs me, I just love the it, the romance between Quinn and Jimmy. I love that they got to see we got to see Wynn using his deductive reasoning skills to figure out who they needed to go after. Yeah. I liked. I just and it was just an overall great episode. Like you said, it was heavy. It was dense. But it was really good. And when I think of the darkest place, I'm, you know, I, we're going down a dark path. We mm-hmm. got Hank Henshaw, who's like murder, murder, kill, kill. You know, so he's definitely a threat when you consider all that he knows. And it kind of makes sense, too, how they were able to tap into the Cadmus um, satellite feeds. Because if you have Hank Henshaw there, why change the access codes? True. Although I'm sure they'll, they better change them now. But... <laughs> They should change them now. But I just love the whole episode. I watched it twice. I probably will watch it again. It was just that enjoyable. And we got Daddy back. Yay! <laughs> I think it's also funny that, like, part of Hank's, like, beef with um everything is mm-hmm. the fact that he came back or, like, he survived <laughs> and, and Daddy, Daddy took over his life. life. <laughs> It was like, like that alien was taking my whole life. It was. It was so even. He was like that alien has taken my whole life. And the part he didn't say was, and y'all motherfuckers didn't even notice that he was <laughs> not <laughs> human. <laughs> y'all were happy to have him. <laughs> That's really what the undertone of that was. He was so good. He was hurt. He was like, y'all liked him better. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I was like, I was kind of like, do you blame him though? Do you blame him? Because <laughs> like, you were kind of an asshole. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have to give it. I have to give it a plus too. I just, I loved all of it. I, I had such a fun time. Uh, I, I might, I might also have some issues with the Guardian storyline, but I love. Uh, David, I ha- I, I'm sorry, I love Makad having all this stuff to do. He mm-hmm. has so much to do and so much to do outside of being Kara's love interest. I like that he, and I like that he is still interested in her. 
yeah. even with everything because like he gave Manel the same exact look that I was giving him like if you <laughs> don't hush up and stay in your lane you know what bugged me about the look though it's the same look he gave Barry when it was clear that Barry and Kara were just being BFFs <laughs> So that's why I'm like, don't you start this bullshit again. But that's that's the really? look you, that's the look where you get when you feel like somebody might be, you know, rolling up on your girl. That's the look you I make. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, he's probably not gonna be pleased with next week's crossover. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, I make so this excited. Go- ungodly sound every time I see a promo for like, oh my god, I can't wait. It's gonna be I so did catch fun. Up, and I did catch up on Arrow. Oh yeah, I saw. So you all mm. all prepped and ready. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm really really excited. Um, the I also looked up because I know Kevin Smith is uh, directing an episode of Supergirl as well. Um, I think it's episode nine. Because yeah, he's so doing it's tomorrow's. The- Flash is his. Yeah, so he's doing the episode. It's it's the first episode back from the break. And it's actually okay. like mid-January, so it's coming back fairly quick after the break. I don't know what's going on. Like, none of these shows are giving us any sort of a break <laughs> for real. Like, it's, it's just I'm okay crazy. with that because they're so good. I'm, I'm <laughs> okay with it, but, like, every time I'm like, oh, like, I just, like, I'll get a bit of a break around. It's like, nah, this show is actually going like straight through to Christmas and then like coming back two weeks later. So yeah, the, um, so we get the, we get next week's crossover and then there's one more episode to set up the, for the mid season finale. And then we come back mid January and that's Kevin Smith's episode. For those of you who are Kevin Smith's fans, I am. So I was looking to see when that was happening. Um, He also did a Facebook Live. I don't know if you saw it when he was on the set. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of Supergirl, yes. Yeah, it was really cute. So they're back at the Fort. I I don't know if he just got to visit the set or if the Fortress of Solitude factors back in because he took I'm us assuming there now that it does. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and yeah. Since, like, it, since just like Star Labs, anybody can just walk their ass up in there. Walks apparently. right in. I, and the and, thing- and Keelix is. And in Keelix's defense, he did his job, but I'm like, can we get this motherfucker some eyes and some visual confirmation in addition to blood? I'm just saying. Well, what frustrated me... Two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication, people. What frustrated me about Keelix, though, was like, he was like, stop, stop, or you will be terminated. Stop, or you will be terminated. Stop. I was like... So when does the termination start? Because he was, you, he was programmed by he Clark. he gave him far too many chances. <laughs> I was like, really? Is this what we're doing? We're just giving all of the chances before we kill somebody? All right, I guess. Um, that that really doesn't help at all. But whatever. Um, so that happened. Um, I am. What what is your hope or what are you most excited to see in the crossover and I think it sucks <laughs> because I feel like we don't have to talk to Chris about next week because the crossover like kicks off at the end of Supergirl so I feel like we're not going to have like any real crossover interaction in our episode so I'm kind of upset about that <laughs> like I want to talk yeah. about the crossover I know that, why do they get to have all the damn fun I know we, we're going to have to work something out on that one like maybe we can do the arrow legends join in on that one because i'm talking i don't feel like they should i don't feel like they should have all the fun with the crossover song yeah yeah we're we're working this out you guys so listeners write in your petition (laughs) (laughs) change.org this is like why are we doing a change.org position you can just send me a message on twitter (laughs) i'm gonna mess around and get cursed out let me Like massage noir, massage noir. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is like, why are y'all treating me like Bernie Bros? What's going on? <laughs> uh, we're the worst. Or shoot, or recently like Sean King. <laughs> <laughs> Talcum X. Oh my god, I died. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're working something out next week because we talking about this crossover. Damn it. That, that's basically what we're saying. 
we're gonna talk look about if we it. gotta wait and record on wednesday and then talk about it uh-huh no mm-hmm. <laughs> and we talk about what happened on the flash then what you gonna do huh can't do nothing no i'm kidding <laughs> you can not publish it let me show that <laughs> I swear, this is how I know these episodes of Supergirl are good because lately it's just us laughing for like an hour <laughs> while we talk about <laughs> that. So, um, yeah, what are you most excited about for the crossover? What do you want to see? Um, <laughs> it's always fun to have Barry and Karen in a room together because they are just a bundle of adorableness together. I love the two of them together. Um, it looks like we're not going to get much of the teams outside of it looks like Arrow's team because God help us if we only had Oliver Queen. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't, from what I've been seeing, I didn't see much of the Flash's team. I didn't see much of, and it does, it's just, it's just Kara. Vibe only brings her through. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to like the interactions between uh, Wynn and Kara because we mm-hmm. saw Wynn with Barry. Oh, Yeah. So I want to see Cisco with Kara and what that looks like. <laughs> I think this is going to be so cute. I want to figure out why aliens and how aliens got into the flareoverse. Mm-hmm. Um, I got giddy at the end of Legends of Tomorrow last week when they said, yeah, our friends back in 2016 need us. Because I got to see what Sarah's going to do. Because I, I swear, she's my girl crush at this point. I uh, I think if Sarah asked me to, I would definitely marry her. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have no idea. I will forever, and I'm never not going to say this anytime anybody brings up Sarah. I have hugged Katie Lotz. She's mm-hmm. so pretty and gorgeous and sweet, and I just like didn't want to let her go, but then I felt like <laughs> I would be uncomfortable. So, <laughs> and there was a line of people behind me. Are there <laughs> laws against this? Yeah. <laughs> So that's the only reason why I stopped touching her. But just know, <laughs> like, I really, really, really did not want to stop hugging her. Um, <laughs> she's so gorgeous. Um, so I am most excited to see the legends interact with Supergirl. Yeah. Um, just because. Oh, and then Diggle, too, because I love how every single time you introduce like any sort of like supernatural element to Diggle, he's just like. <laughs> what the hell like how do we get here he's like i started off with a guy who shoots bows and arrows and now (laughs) there are people who have super speed and there's a alien who with lasers from her eyes like i just can't wait two men who combine into one being that sets on himself on fire (laughs) like i just like diggle is just always fun in these situations it's interesting though i'm not gonna i'm not gonna you know poo poo it because I get it all of these shows have huge casts and you have to pick and choose who's going to be on all these episodes um but it's just interesting to me because there's certain people that you know will never get cut out it's like how last year with the crossover for some reason um we had just just like Laurel and them like in the background, like not really doing anything, like just there. I don't know. Cause their names are in the credits. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's like, I want to see Supergirl interact with the flash team, but it looks like it's ma- mainly going to just be Cisco um, because of his vibe powers, which makes sense. I'm not saying it doesn't make sense, but you know, like, Felicity still always manages to be there. She ain't got no powers. <laughs> there, was a, there was a little clip in the promo that showed her bursting into a room with a gun. I'm like, really? Yeah. It's, we it's got just we got mumbles. We got mumbles on the team like this now. Yeah. Yes, I call Felicity mumbles because she mumble acts and it's supremely annoying. Girl, you grown. Enunciate. And and that's the thing is like I like all of these characters, so I'm not like poo pooing them. I'm not saying I don't want to see them, but it's just always interesting to me how like certain characters are always included no matter what no matter whether or not it legitimately makes sense or not while other characters who I'm like actually I think you could have worked them into this (laughs) are not are not scenes during these crossovers but you know I'm reserving judgment I'm happy to talk about it either way I 
also want to see if Sarah has a little crush on Supergirl because, like, that's Sarah's thing. Sarah loves like, or a strong if Sarah, woman. Or if Kara develops a little girl crush on Sarah. Just saying. <laughs> Hell, they, I have a girl crush on Sarah. It's not outside of the I'm, I'm like, <laughs> they, they need to bring Alex. What, what, what she's... <laughs> they need to bring Alex with them. Because I bet you Alex and Sarah would be making out by the end of the hour. <laughs> making out? Girl. I know. We saw what Sarah did in episode As, one of this season. Come on now. And I feel like, you know, Alex needs to have herself a little romp. You know, like now that she's fully out of the closet, you know, you can't always yeah. start with a, a, a love match. Sometimes you just got to <laughs> have fun. That would be awesome. Look Very at this. Just over here writing all of the fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> this is all this is, fan fiction. By the way, I will legitimately be writing fan fiction after this crossover episode because I'm going to write all the stuff that I wanted to happen that didn't. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. I, I'll, I'll post some links after I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this episode is a straight up A plus, which is so great going into this crossover. This the season keeps getting better and better. It really does. I'm loving it. Um, anything else? No, I think that's it. All right. Let us know how you guys feel. Uh, write that change that org position and let Chris know that he needs to have us on for the crossover episodes. <laughs> <laughs> or hit him up. Or you know what? He posts. He usually posts posts the episodes in the MTR group. So flood it. <laughs> and if you don't flood it, I'll cry. No, I'm kidding. We're so we're so horrible. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> Chris is going to yeah, be like, stay is- out my mentions. Look, we, are, we are on the Republican <laughs> plan to win this thing. We're going to do this thing their way. It worked for them. Hell, we're going to make it work for us. No, if it was really what we need is everybody to be silent, but then just vote for us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. We will see you guys next week. Um, hopefully more than once. Because uh, we're talking about this crossover. I don't care if we just got record and 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 secretly publish. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. um, Put it up on YouTube, our damn selves. <laughs> horrible, horrible. Uh, <laughs> the word ridiculous. Okay, we will see you guys next week. Super excited. Get hype, you guys. Get hype. <laughs> Bye. Bye.